I was talking to my trainer the other day. We were working out in my backyard and he was wearing my ass out, man. And I sat down on the wall and I said, man, I'm struggling today. This is hard. And my trainer's a younger guy. And he said, what do you mean? I said, man, this workout is hard. He said, no, nah, man, this is hard. He said, how you came from a poor kid in the projects to this house you got in this neighborhood and the TV star, he said, that's hard. And I had to catch myself because working out ain't near as hard as the struggle to get where you want. And everybody in this room wants two things. Everybody wants to be successful and everybody want to be happy. I'm going to tell you something about that. That that happiness and success is available for every last one of you. But I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do. You're going to change your mindset. If you're planning on being successful, you have to change this here. The difference between successful people and non-successful people is right here. It ain't no difference. It ain't none. I ain't got no more than none of y'all got. God gave me the same thing he gave y'all. God loved me the same as he loved all y'all. He don't love me more than he love you. But you have got to change your mindset. You got to get funky if you want to be successful. If you think that they're going to mail this money to your house, you're dead wrong about that. If you think they're going to pave the way for you and make it easy, you're dead wrong about that. If you want to be successful, you got to change your mind and you're going to have to have some faith. And grow your wings on the way down. See, the people that will live their dreams, the 2% that will do that, these are, and write this down, become a risk taker. They're risk takers. They don't mind failing. They don't mind making mistakes. They're willing to take life on, take life in the collar. This God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you can't be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? I like what Helen Keller said. She said, life is short and unpredictable. Eat the dessert first. Here's something else. Write this down. Make it important to become financially independent. You know, people say money won't make you happy, but everybody want to find out for themselves. If you look at yourselves, make it important that you find some way to use your talents and gifts to generate the income that allow you to control your destiny. I read something that said, either you control your destiny or someone else will. You have got to make some decisions in your life, but you got to tie it to this gift. Your gift is the thing that you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your God-given gift. He didn't hide it from you. He didn't put it under the rocks. He didn't hide it in the ocean. It, it ain't on, it, 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 you don't need no map to find it. God put it right here when he made you. All y'all are gifted at something. The Bible says your gift will make room for you and put you in the presence of great men. That's a scripture. That ain't a theory of mine. See, I ain't got but one gift. I have the ability to take information and transpose it into comedy immediately. I don't even have to think about it. I don't even have to, it's just what I do. I dealt with people with multiple personality disorders, 52 different personalities, and how to put them back together. And I dealt with people with no personality have a much bigger problem. No matter what the diversity of people I've dealt with and the diversity you've seen in this show, the ultimate question I'm always asking is, how do I help people to break through? The question is, what are you breaking through to? In essence, all of us at some level to feel alive have to always feel like we're growing. When people ask me, what does it take to be happy? I always tell them one word, progress. Progress equals happiness. Even if you're not where you want to be yet, if you're on the road, if you're improving, if you're making progress, you're going to love it. You're going to feel alive. On the other hand, it doesn't matter how successful you are. If you stop growing, you start dying inside. Now, how does this relate to this session on Breakthrough? Well, I'll say it's really simple. If you and I want to know what it takes to be happy, we have to understand what is our current blueprint of how our life's supposed to be. Now, what do we mean by blueprint? Well, we have a story in our head of how life's supposed to be. Some people's story is you work hard in school, you become really great, you're a nice person, you're a good person, and then you grow up and you take care of yourself and you find the ideal man and you fall in love and you have a white picket fence and you have three perfect children and you live happily ever after. Somebody else's story, the old story was, you work really hard in school, you excel in college, you go to work for a big corporation, 
and you move up through the ranks until you're the president or chairman of the company and you become successful and respected throughout life. These are some old stories. Obviously, the stories that we hear today of what people's lives are supposed to be like are completely diverse. We no longer have these little archetypes, but one archetype still seems to remain. And that archetype is, in order for you to really feel like you're enough, many people believe they have to achieve an enormous amount. They may, may do it in different ways. They may do it by building a company and taking it public when they're 27 or 25 years old, or you know, they find and create a new technology, or they become a very special doctor. But we live in a culture in the West that teaches people that you're not enough unless you do something really special and unique, and we define special and unique in interesting ways. So you got to make it important to take care of yourself. Put that at the top of the list, because you can't do well, you can't do good work if you don't feel good. We don't want to be like the man who said, I, if I'd known I'd lived this long, I'd have taken better care of myself. Here's something else. Repeat after me, please. OQP. Only quality people. Yes. Look at your relationships and ask yourself the question. Jim Rohn would ask this question. What is this relationship doing to me? Sidney Poitier wrote a book called The Measure of a Man. I love the taste because I love his voice. He said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. He said, either you adjust, adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? MIT did a study and the study indicated that you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your, your closest friends and associates earn. Who's impacting you? Who's in your ear? What influence do they have on you? Dr. Dennis Kimbrell said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. So practice the principle of OQP, only quality people. And somebody's saying, Les, can I change them? No, it's a full-time job changing yourself. Some people are so negative, they walk into a dark room and begin to develop. My family members and friends call me crazy for going to seminars, spending money on books and tapes and going to seminars. When are you going to stop going? I said, when I die. If you and I, from this day forward, are going to be happy, just remember what we've said. It takes two things, grow and give. A meaningful life comes from growing, that sense of progress, and it comes from having life not just be about me, but about we, doing something that makes me feel connected to other people besides myself. That growth, that sense of contribution fills a deep spiritual need that we all have. If you are unhappy in your life, you've got three choices, really two, Blame, that's not a choice, it's not going to work. Don't blame someone else, don't blame the event, don't blame yourself. Just figure out what you're going to do to change your life. That's my specialty. If you like my coaching or my team's coaching, come visit with us. Come to an event, come get a coach, come to a program, and we'll guide you through it more than just a few minutes like this. And we'll do it directly, an environment that will shift you. Or change your blueprint. You're going to have to rewire what's going on inside, and that's what we focus on as well. So I hope this journey has been an interesting one for you. I hope it's opened up your eyes to what it takes to go from where you are to where you want to be. It takes changing your emotional pattern. It takes bringing presence to your life. It takes realizing you have no problems compared to somebody else and putting your life in perspective. It takes the ability to deal with those extreme stresses that happen in your life by questioning your limiting beliefs. And again, we'd love to coach you and show you how to change those in a permanent way where it happens automatically, just like lifting weight so often until the muscle is always there and you find yourself able to follow through. It takes for you to be able to figure out how to deal with crisis and how to turn it around. It takes facing your fear. It takes pushing yourself through what used to stop you. It takes putting yourself in a position where you connect to what's more important than just yourself, what you value than just yourself. And it takes, I think in this case also, the ability to realize that no matter what happens to you, you're more than that moment. You're more than the story you think you're supposed to be. And that even when you're not matching what you think you need to be, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe you're having to find a different part of yourself that's going to fulfill you at a much deeper level. Sometimes failing to get your goal gives you your destiny. 
I can't tell you how many people I've known over the years who had an idea of what they thought their life was supposed to be like, and they didn't achieve it, and they felt miserable and upset and frustrated, and one day an opening happened, and they went, oh my God, thank God that didn't happen. I think it's Garth Brooks had a great song, and it's a song about when he was in high school, and he was in love with this girl, infatuated with her, and she didn't even know that he existed. And he prayed to God every day that she would notice him, that she would fall in love with him. And then sure enough, she never did. He was so disappointed. His blueprint didn't match. His life didn't match it because she didn't even know he existed. And he felt this suffering. He could do nothing to turn it around. Well, 15 years later, he became a guy named Garth Brooks, somebody everybody knew. And he could rock, you know, stadiums with his energy and his song and his music. And he goes back to be at his high school reunion. I think it was his 15 year reunion, if I remember correctly. I don't remember the exact year, but all I remember is he said he saw that woman that he was so obsessed by. He was looking forward to seeing her. And now he was Garth Brooks and he met her. And after he met her and spent some time with her, he wrote a song called Thank God for Unanswered Prayers. <laughs> Sometimes not getting your blueprints, the best thing that ever happened because the disappointment drives you to find something more important inside of you or not getting it makes you look for another aspect of your life, a spiritual aspect, a, a family aspect, a physical aspect. If you can just trust that life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you, then you can find in any situation a benefit that can take your life to the next level. I don't care if you're Frank and Kristen. I don't care if you're, you know, Mandy and Scott. I don't care if you're Joaquin and Kim. Every one of us in our life is going to fee face situations where it feels like we have total trauma, something that's been taken from us. The real question is, what are you going to do with it? Some people just live in their story of what they don't have, and they have the right to do that. If Frank and Kristen lived in pain and felt bad, we'd all say they have the right to do it. It's the difference between what you have the right to do and what you deserve to give yourself and others. We have the ability to transcend whatever happens to us. There's something called post-traumatic growth. Very few people know about it. Two people go through the same stress. One's destroyed, the other grows. What's the difference? The people that grow will not give up. They don't have any excuses. They find the way to break through whatever it takes. And when they do, three things happen. Number one, they realize who they really are and what they're capable of. They realize they're so much stronger than they thought they were. And number two, they deepen all their relationships. You want to know who really cares about you, who you love and who loves you? Go through some tragedy. Go through some hard times. All your Facebook friends go away. Your real friends, your real family shows up for you and you show up for them. And it deepens your relationships. And the third thing happens if you can push yourself through and break through whatever challenges life gives you, is each time you have a breakthrough, you get stronger. And it almost like builds a psychological immunity in you where suddenly, all of a sudden, it's like stuff happens, you know stuff's going to happen, and you're not scared of it anymore. Because after you've been through a stroke, after you've been through, you know, losing the use of some of your body, your senses, after you lose a family member, and you break through to that, you get to the other side, it's like, give me your best shot, life. It's almost like there's this psychological immunity that says, I'm ready for whatever life will give me. I don't want challenges, but if they're here, I know I can handle them. That strength of spirit is what creates a sense of freedom and joy in life. And that strength of spirit basically comes from living a life where you are constantly and never ending feeling your way to improve yourself and to help others. That's my mission. And if we can serve you again in the future, I hope you'll check us out. There's three ways you can continue to participate with us. You can come to an event, come have an experience with us live at a weekend at our Unleash the Power Within or our Date with Destinies. I think you'll find it's very different than just sitting here talking to you quietly sitting in front of your computer screen. It's a rock and roll environment. It's like going to the ballpark and having one person sitting there talking to you versus being in the ballpark of the rock and roll concert, you know, with 50,000. There's an energy and a power that comes from it. Second is there's immersion. Here we talk for an hour. There's distractions and emails. There it's total focus and we go for immersion. We're literally, what we did here over six weeks, a few little conversations, all that happens over and over again, multiple times a day, and you get that shift. So come to an event or call up and get a coach. We have people that you can work with and have a free coaching session and make sure it's really valuable for you. But these are people that can check in with you to help make sure you break through, you make the changes you want to make in your career or your finances or your body or your emotions or whatever area matters to you. And finally, lastly, and probably most importantly, every day you got to feed your mind. 
Because every day, most of us are turning on, you know, some form of news. It shows up in our pocket in our Blackberries or I, you know, iPods or iPhones, I should say. It shows up, uh, you know, on your computer constantly. It chases us, and it rarely does a good idea interrupt you. Really, what you have to do is pursue the ideas, pursue the experiences that are going to change your life. And we have a way to do it called net time, no extra time. A way where you can keep feeding your mind the stuff that really matters with some products or services. So if you're interested in any of those things, be sure to click on your interest of an event or interest in having a free coaching session. Or maybe try one of our audio programs because the other challenge here is with video, you've got to sit here potentially and watch me. But with audio, you can do it while you're working out. You can do it while you're cleaning the house. You can do it while you're driving in the car or you're getting to work. We'd love to continue serving you in any way we can. I know I've gone long in this session, but I really want you to think about how can I give my life the way I want it to be? The way I do it is I figure out what my blueprint is and I update it for what life is. I change my life, match my blueprint, and suddenly my life feels full and alive. Thank you for the time that we spent together here. I've really enjoyed our time. And I hope that this breakthrough series reminds you to never settle for less than you can be. Never settle for less than you can give or you can share. Live strong, live with passion, and God bless.